In this video, I'll explain the basics of engineering and power distribution in Starship Simulator. The ship is powered by a fusion reactor on deck G, which acts as a generator for the batteries. Power from the reactor's main bus is initially sent to battery distributors. There are eight of these, two for each quadrant. Located in the FDEC engineering tunnel, the battery distributors send power to physical battery arrays. The 48 battery arrays located on deck F store generated power and output to battery aggregators. The eight battery aggregators in Deck F's engineering tunnel consolidate power from the battery arrays and send it to Deck distributors. There are four Deck distributors, one for each quadrant, located on Deck G. These supply power from the aggregators to local distributors on each of the ship's seven decks. The four Deck distributors located on each deck supply power to granular corridor control panels. The corridor panels provide switching for a specific area of that deck. Think of these like a fuse box. Deck A is unique in that it does not feature distributor panels for each quadrant or corridor panels. Everything on this deck is controlled from the main deck distribution panel. We'll take a look at the redundancy provided by this later in this video. Despite the lack of corridor panels, Deck A does have granular lighting controls in each room. These will also be added to every deck in future. Let's now take a look at how to manipulate power across the ship and learn how changes cascade throughout the power network. If we disable the bridge hardware, the load demand for deck A decreases evenly across the four deck distributors that provide power to this deck. Heading down to the deck distributors on deck G, Using the forward distributor as an example, we note that both the load provided to deck A and the load demanded from battery aggregators has reduced. This effect continues to be noted at the aggregator in the deck F tunnels as the demand on the battery arrays has decreased accordingly. At the deck F battery arrays, we can see confirmation that load to the aggregator has reduced, and also note that demand on each individual battery cell has reduced accordingly. However, load provided to the batteries from the battery distributor has not changed, as the batteries are charged at the same rate regardless of demand. This is confirmed at a battery distributor panel in the deck F tunnels. We can note that the battery main bus load also remains the same. Working all the way back through the system to the Deck G main distribution panel, we note that there's no change in the power supplied by the reactor main bus to the battery bus. This is also reflected on the reactor main bus panel, where we confirm there is no change in the battery feed and reactor power output. Let's now take a look at redundancy in some areas of the Starship's power distribution network. As we saw a little earlier, by default, power supplied to deck A is shared amongst the four deck distributors. If we disable three of these distributors, the remaining distributor is able to shoulder the entire load. On deck G's deck distributor panel for the ship's forward quadrant, we see a significantly increased demand from deck A. This is reflected as a higher load on the forward battery aggregators. Conversely, the aft deck distributor panel shows no demand from deck A, and load on the aft battery aggregators is reduced accordingly. The forward battery aggregator in the deck F tunnels shows the increased demand cascading through the network. Note the increased load on the forward battery arrays. At the forward battery array on deck F, we also note an increased load across each individual battery cell. As we noted in the previous section, generated power into the battery remains the same. I'll now demonstrate the effect of disabling the feed from the reactor to the battery bus. As we saw earlier, this feed normally acts as a generator to charge the batteries. 
Without constant charge power going into the battery arrays, the batteries begin to discharge as the demand from the ship's systems erodes their power reserves. With the reactor battery feed disabled, the batteries will eventually run out and the ship will go dark. All decks can also be powered directly from the reactor in case the batteries are dead or damaged. To conclude our engineering deep dive, let's investigate what happens if we disable the reactor feed itself. In the current demo, the answer is not a lot. The effect is actually the same as disabling the battery feed, as the systems that are directly driven by the reactor, such as thrusters and FTL drive, currently do not consume or require power. Reactor shutdown and startup procedures are also not yet modelled, although this is expected soon. I hope you found this video useful and entertaining. A download link for the Starship Simulator demo is in the description below. Please feel free to drop a like, check out my other Starship Simulator content, or even subscribe for regular sim content. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.